protein crystallization. The biological functions of proteins are determined by their three-dimensional structures via molecular interactions. However, conditions such as temperature, pH, salt, or solvent affects the stability of protein structure. Understanding the structures of proteins can help us predict their functions and further develop new medicines that control protein activities and eventually cure diseases. X-ray crystallography is currently the most widely used method to determine the molecular structure of proteins. X-ray has a wavelength approximately identical to the distance between atoms. The atoms in a crystal can cause X-ray beams to diffract into specific directions according to their positions. We can then work out the electron density of protein molecules by measuring the diffraction angles and diffraction intensities. A computer can then help to construct a three-dimensional picture of the protein by fitting in amino acids accordingly. Stable protein crystals are prepared from pure and concentrated protein solutions in order to obtain precise diffraction data. However, each protein requires a unique set of conditions for successful crystallization. Factors including temperature, pH value of the reagent, the choice of the buffer system, and the precipitants or additives should be considered altogether. Precipitants like Polyethylene glycol, PEG, will decrease protein solubility and induce supersaturation to aid crystallization. Additives like metal ions are also commonly used to stabilize the protein structure. To screen crystallization conditions of a particular protein, large numbers of trials must be carried out on crystallization plates. Commercial kits are now available to offer various formulations to save time. Screening can be done manually or by a robot for high throughput crystallization. Protein solutions must be purified and concentrated before crystallization to form well-ordered and stable protein crystals. The concentration of protein depends on the conditions of each protein to reach supersaturation. It is usually advised to start between 5 to 50 milligrams per milliliters, whereas the total amount of purified protein depends on the number of crystallization conditions to be tested. The recommended amount would be at least 10 milligrams for manual screening. Vapor diffusion is currently the most common method of protein crystallization and can be performed in either hanging drop or sitting drop format. In the hanging drop system, a drop of protein solution is placed on an inverted cover slip, suspended above the reservoir. While in the sitting drop system, protein drops are placed on a pedestal inside the reservoir. Sitting drop system is usually applied when the surface tension of the protein solution is low. The suggested amounts to go into each well are 500 microliters of crystallization reagent, then 1 to 2 microliters of protein solution. Dilute the protein solution with the same volume of crystallization reagent taken from the reservoir. Avoid bubbles and contamination when pipetting. The volume of the protein solution is now doubled and the concentrations of protein and precipitin are halved, containing more water. The crystallization plate should then be sealed, labeled, and incubated at constant temperature between 4 to 25 degrees Celsius. Now that the protein solution contains relatively lower concentrations of protein and participants, the water within evaporates in order to equilibrate with the reservoir. Water from the protein solution will end up in the reservoir and the concentration of protein and participants will increase gradually. 
When the protein solution becomes supersaturated, protein molecules will begin to pack in a repeating array and eventually form crystals. Different proteins would form crystals in various shapes and sizes. Unlike salt crystals, protein crystals exhibit optical activity and look like colorful gems under polarized light microscope as the polarizer rotates. Now you can also make your own colorful crystal gems with proteins.